From being hired as a teacher and forcing your students into deadly battles to incredible world building, amazing characters, an assassination plot, and feeding animals? Uh, welcome to 100 Days of Fire Emblem Three Houses. The game opens up with a battle, no, a war of incredible proportions, filled with knights, barbarians, and pegasus, p p pegasi, whatever. The battle rages on when, all of a sudden, a man comes crashing down from the sky. The man swiftly mows down the opposing army, that same army being led by Lady Seros. That's an important name, make sure to remember that. The man finally swings his sword. It extends like a whip, one-shotting all of the fodder. And so, they begin their incredible battle. Okay, we got a bit of a battle going on. Tell me, Nemesis, do you recall the Red Canyon? You'll die! 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 Ah, you got blatant stabbing in a Nintendo game? Everything that I loved! After that, time flashes forward, and we see a peculiar person sitting down. We started talking to this girl, only to find out... <sighs> okay. How you got in here. No way we got full voice lines. Yo, how are we gonna get fully voice acted lines in Fire Emblem, but not Pokemon? Moving on, we finally get to see our avatar, Byleth. Looking at them, it's sort of odd how they look both unique and generic at the same time. The mysterious girl we're talking to falls asleep, and the, oh, well, I guess we're here now. We meet Geralt, a man who's been working with us as a mercenary. He serves as our mentor, having taught us what we know. After giving us some advice, Geralt tells us that our next job is in the kingdom. We head outside and meet... Okay. Please forgive our intrusion. We the goats are here! Situation. Oh my god. What do a bunch of kids like you want at this hour? We're being pursued by a group of bandits. I can only hope that you will be so kind as to lend your support. It's true. They attacked us while we were at rest in our camp. We've been separated from our companions and we're outnumbered. They're after our lives, not to mention our gold. It turns out the three of them are being chased by a group of bandits and it's our job to stop them. Prologue. An inevitable encounter. Oh, turn-based combat. The battle begins, and immediately one of my favorite OSTs from this game starts playing. Let's take care of those. We got fallen winds. Oh my god. Let's go. The battle system in this game is pretty cool. The game is like a chessboard that allows your units to move within a certain area. You have to be up close to hit your enemy, but once you're close enough, it becomes something similar to a Pokemon battle, uh, with your moves and stats against your opponents as you try and lower each other's HP. The battle system gets more advanced as we move through the game, and oh my god, this kid is about to die. To save them, Violet jumps in the way and, well, literally dies. Thanks so much for watching guys, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm just joking. Uh, it turns out the mysterious girl from earlier can actually stop time. Honestly, what are you accomplishing with that little stunt? It's like you're trying to get me killed, you fool. You can eh? call me Sothis, but I'm also known as The Beginning. She rewinds time, saving us from certain death. This time, instead of blatantly unaliving ourselves, Violet blocks the bandit's axe and sends him flying. The bandits are defeated and a group of people show up, called the Knights of Seros. It turns out Geralt has a history with the Knights of Seros, having been a member and the strongest one of all time. This guy here worked with Geralt and pushes him to come back with him, to somewhere called the Gareg Mok Monastery. However, that's not the most important thing here. It's this following question. And how about you, kid? Are you the captain's child? Hmm, interesting. Should we lie to him? I don't want to say I'm a bandit, but he is a stranger to me, is messed up. Let's just go that's correct. Let's do a bit of trolling. Is that so? Well, physical differences aside, your mannerisms do remind me of the captain. I'd love for you to see the monster. Oh, we got free admission by lying. This is great. <sighs> no, this was not great. This game is nothing like other games when it comes to these choices. I appreciate your help back there. Your skill is beyond question. Thank you, I appreciate it. I had to look forward in time. I literally got a second try to be able to function competently. So thank you, I guess I appreciate it. But if another situation like that shows up, you are definitely going to die. You're clearly an experienced mercenary. 
and your father. That would be Geralt, the Blade Breaker. Have my lives gone this far? Yo, I was trolling. Oh no, you can't back out now. Later on, characters continue to remember and treat you based on this one decision you make. It's something that is definitely gonna bite me back later. First off, uh, this is Dimitri, a stoic knight and the prince of Fargus, one of the three kingdoms in Fodland. Uh, this is Edelgard, a princess of the Adrestian Empire, uh, another kingdom in Fodland, you know? Classic uh, war princess vibes. And finally, this guy is Claude. He's a chill guy that will run away if needed, is super strategy focused, and is the grandson of the leader of the Leicester Alliance. Basically. These are the top three dogs in this game. This will be your first time at the monastery. I'd be happy to show you around. It really is Fodlin in a nutshell. The good and the bad. Like it or not, we'll be there soon enough. There it is. Garrick Mock Monastery. Rhea's here. Rhea, okay. Oh, that's the queen. Okay, okay, okay. Rhea. I wonder if she was the same girl in the beginning. I wonder. Did the flow of time bring you here? We meet Lady Rhea, the leader of the Church of Seros and Seda, her advisor. Geralt and Rhea seem to have a history, although it's pretty vague as to whether it's a positive or negative one. The miracle of fatherhood has blessed you. The miracle of fatherhood has blessed you. <laughs> that is child. Yo, my bad guys. I thought it was gonna be funny. I didn't know actually this game had consequences. Like people are genuinely think I'm his son. Like yo, I'm Yo, chill! Reyes successfully convinces Geralt to rejoin the Knights of Seros, and we are offered a job as well. Not as a mercenary, but as a teacher, funnily enough. We meet Manuela and Hanneman, our fellow professors at the Academy, who explain the concept of the three houses. The three houses are namely the Black Eagles, the Blue Lions, and the Golden Deer. We're offered the first pick in what house we'll teach this year, but before we make this huge decision, uh, we gotta meet and interact with these kids so we can make a proper and educated decision. The scene cuts to Rhea talking with Sedeth and oh my god, they're doing it again. Have you no intention of changing your mind, Rhea? Appointing a stranger, a child no less, as a professor at our esteemed academy is- So she is up to something, otherwise they wouldn't have done this, okay. I have made my decision, Sedeth. I know worrying comes naturally to you, but there is- Don't cook him. That stranger is Geralt's flesh and blood after all. Yo. I made one mistake. I actually did not. Yo, I didn't mean. I thought it was gonna be like a funny troll, and he'd be like, "Haha!" Like a Pokemon. Like choose any of these two dialogues, and like they end up being the same thing. But what the hell? People still believe it. This is affecting the story. I'm cooked. Oh my god, yo, I lied. At any rate, we get a great cutscene introducing all the students, teachers, and well, the possibilities we'll have at the school. Finally. The boring part's over. We get free reign of our character and set off to speak with the house leaders and students. As we run around aimlessly, we finally reach the reception hall and speak to the first of our three house leaders, Edelgard. She gives us an option to learn about the students in her house. I read through all of their unique backstories as well as their motivations and lineage. This girl barely knows English. This girl's a singer turned soldier and well, this guy... Well, this guy's black. After I got a decent grasp of who they all were, we returned to the hall and it was time for us to make a decision. Okay, I think I made my decision. I'm gonna go with the Black Eagle House. So you have chosen the Black Eagles led by Edelgard, correct? Yes, sir. We wrap up our conversation with Rhea and head over to meet our class. And well, let me introduce you guys. The guy with the orange hair is Ferdinand, a noble who's both stuck up and chill at the same time. It's weird. Uh, the guy with the emo haircut is Hubert, a magic user and Edelgard's servant. He's kind of rude at first, but he'll grow on you. The girl with the purple hair and the eye marking is Petra from Bridget. She's still mastering English and her sentences are, well, the interesting to say the least. On Edelgard's right is Casper, a loudmouth protagonist type with no family inheritance, which is why he works so hard. Next is Dorothea, a mature commoner girl excelling in learning and magic. She is going to remind you she's a quick study literally every five seconds. Then there's Bernadetta, an anti-social nerd who loves books and cannot interact with other humans properly. So uh, most of you watching, I'm just kidding, you don't like books. Finally there's Linhart, bro is just uh, always sleeping. Ah, finally. The first day is over. I'm so sorry it took so long, but trust me, the days are gonna start flying by now. Day two to three. Today I'm heading over to Hanneman's office. Before we start teaching at the school, he wants us to take a test to see if we have something called a uh, rest. Uh, we do the test and... What is this? A pattern I've never seen before. 
Is it possible an as yet undiscovered crest has been detected? Okay, so we got the classic trope of main character is like super special. We've never seen this before. Day four, in Fire Emblem Three Houses, teachers function around this schedule. With Monday to Saturday being full of lectures and activities, Sunday is our day off. During these days off, you're given free reign to explore the campus. We're given a test by Seda to speak to our house leader, Edelgard. While I stumbled around looking for her, I actually accepted another quest from Dimitri's servant and friend, Deju. To welcome us into the school, he'd like to cook something for us, but he's lacking on some vegetables. So he gave me some seeds to plant in the greenhouse. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, because I am a new teacher in the school, we're going to be having a mock battle between all three houses soon. I talked to Dimitri and Claude about it, and they had no intention of losing. As I scrambled to look for Edelgard, I got to explore more of the school, areas like the dining hall and classrooms. While in the dining hall, I also ran into someone new. Hello, Hello there, Professor. Well, I call you that, but I am afraid I am not a student here myself. This second option is kind of crazy, <laughs> considering you barely know this person. All right, um... Whatever, let's go for it. My brother would not be pleased if he heard you saying such things. My fault, I thought that too. The monastery is kind enough to provide a sanctuary for my brother and I. He's the only family I have. Might you help me with a favor? How is that relevant? Okay, wait. I'll accept it, but like... Hello there, Professor. Oh no, this game is actually so genuinely brutal with their dialogue. Like, they do not forgive you for messing things up. After accepting Flane's request, I walked back to the dorm, finally finding Edelgard. After that, we headed over to a new area on the map, the greenhouse and fishing pond. We successfully got some fish and... I need to look for it, wait... Oh, was that good? Oh... Oh... Perfect! Planted the seeds Deju gave us. I rushed over to Flane to complete the quest. Or so I thought. I ran into this guy called Sylvain who is... Well, how do I say this? He's a bit of a scumbag, but he does give us a quest to share a meal with our students in the dining hall. I reported to Flane and got a bunch of fish and bait as a reward, which is kind of counterintuitive if you think about it. She just received like negative fish, right? The hell? Since we were in the dining hall anyway, might as well kill two birds with one stone. I headed over to the dining staff and requested to share a meal with two of my students, those being Edelgard and Petra. And just like that, day four was over. Day seven. As days five and six pass, it's one of our students Ferdinand's birthday. The game actually gives you an option to buy the kids flowers, but more importantly, it is the day of the mock battle. I am incredibly unprepared, but we move. The three houses bicker a bit before the battle. Well, that was, that was kind of a crazy sentence. Out of our nine units, you are limited to using five in this battle. Picking what I thought were the strongest students, we began the mock battle. I pushed most of the team forward, taking up the space between us and the opponents. First, we took a hit from Ash, a student from the Blue Lions. Following that, we received damage from Lorenz, a Golden Deer student. Having three different factions on one battlefield was an incredibly refreshing experience. I hadn't really played anything like this before. Now that it was our turn, I used Byleth to mow down Lorenz and use the rest of the team to take down Ash. From there, I attempted to attack Claude, but couldn't really get to him because of his great positioning. After putting Huber in the front lines of Byleth, he was sadly taken out. I moved Petra up and had her destroy the fencing Claude was hiding behind and had Byleth finish the job. This guy in the ground. Schemes I can handle, no problem, but I'm not much for fighting. Go easy on me. No, you're dying, buddy. You know that was a joke, right? <laughs> so much as a smile. My bad, my bad. Nice, level four. Next, I moved everyone else up and headed towards the teacher Manuela, taking her out easily. All that's left is Mr. Hanuman, Dimitri, and the rest of the Blue Lions. Beautiful work, Professor. But the true challenge starts now. I'll have them approach. Nice. All right, we got them where we want now. Go here, attack. Iron Axe, smash. Cook this fraud. 12, okay. How did his counterattack do the same? And what the hell? Okay, Bob, we're gonna need to kill this guy. Is that gonna be enough to kill? Iron Axe it is, I guess. This guy's tanky. Stop counterattacking! Oh my god! This I can do is try and take this guy out and then heal up next turn. That doesn't do enough? Tempest Lance will be enough to kill though. Good job. Nice. Uh, apologies, your highness. I can go no further. This was beneath me. Now, 
Calm down. Barely did enough. Uh, Petra will have you move over here and do some damage. I don't know if you'll be able to hit, but if you get a crit, though. Wrath Strike. Get a crit. No crit. Alright. Good damage, though. Good stuff. We need to heal up next turn, though. Some people might die. You're a tough opponent, but I refuse to yield. Do not fool yourself into believing. Uh oh. Don't kill Violet, please. Ooh. Oh my god. Four. Okay, I definitely need to heal up. Oh my god. No! Oh my god, I thought she attacked Violet. I would have died. I would have actually been. Well, not died, but I was very close. I need to heal up this turn. Careful now. Or is it worth just going for it? Now the counterattack is going to kill me. I need to heal. Heal up. Uh, Edelgard, go here. Attack. Be smash on this guy. It's time. We can finally settle the question of who's stronger. Very well. I accept your challenge. With you as my opponent, I won't hold anything back. I would expect no less. Nice. Alright, level two. Clean. My training was insufficient. I am so sorry, everyone. The rest is up to you. By everyone, he means this, this one girl with the act, uh, with the bow. Uh, goodbye. You're done. I don't even need the rat strike. And you crit too. That was so OD. She has 10 HP. You did 45. Petra needs to chill. These crits are insane. Flame spirit protect me. Good stuff. All right, cook him. Oh, he did nine damage with this, okay. We're all just standing in line to kill this guy. <laughs> Alright, Byleth, put this man in the dirt. One. Can any of you guys do better? Okay. <laughs> oh god, leveled up for getting hit. Alright, Byleth, cook him. Nice. Level five, okay. Such power dwells within. Why are you asking yourself? I don't know. All right, that's that. The winner of this mock battle is the Black Eagle House. Thank you. I try. After a tough battle, the students and I headed back to the classroom to talk about our well-deserved win. That was impressive, Professor. I mean, uh, impressive. We gained a victory because of your great leadership. We certainly did. We all tried our best, of course, but we couldn't have won without you. I was curious what it would look like if you did not hold back, and you did not disappoint. <laughs> I dare say we owe our victory to Lady Edelgard. How so? For that battle, she was only a soldier following our professor's command. Sure, she was an incredibly powerful soldier. Don't worry about it too much, Linhart. All that matters is that we won! I'm all done with being on the battlefield, okay? I'd rather stay back than pursue victory out there. My guy, you did nothing. Does anyone recognize this person? Yo, you were not in my party. You were all as ridiculous as always. We only managed to win because we worked together. Was it something I said? We are then called to speak with Rhea and Seda. They inform us of a mission next month in which we'll be disposing of some bandits nearby. What's this? The bandits from before. There seems to be some kind of odd power ranger with them. Is that the Megazord? The Megazord! <clears throat> Sorry, I don't know what happened there. This guy was the one who hired the bandits to kill the house leaders at the start of the game. Ooh, the plot thickens. The villain uses instant transmission and leaves the bandits on their own. Ending the day. Day 16. As the days fly by, it finally reaches day 16. Today is Annette's birthday. Just like for everybody else, I bought some flowers for them. Day 18. Two more days pass, landing us on day 18. As it was Sunday again, we have another day off. You know what that means? Time for exploration, quests, and a bit of tomfoolery. Also, this game has quick travel, which is awesome, considering I spent 30 minutes looking for Edelgard last time. For our first quest of the day, I headed over to Geralt, my dad that's not actually my dad, but I appreciate the sentiment and fatherly advice. Mainly concerning the battle with the bandits that my class will be going on, Going on, I made it sound like a field trip. With the prince? No way! Oh, no, 
damage. To prepare for the battle, Geralt tells us about a tactics primer in his room that I should read over before the mission. I forgot to mention, something I like doing is sporadically picking up a bunch of quests, that way I can submit them in bulk at the end. I don't know, I find it more satisfying. Which is why I headed over to the Black Eagle classroom and spoke with Edelgard, my second quest. We learned from Edelgard that we can receive training from the faculty and that it is theoretically possible to recruit students from other houses to our house. I speak with the dining staff and pick up a third quest to get some recipes from the library. Alright, back on track. We're looking for the tactics primer, which is in the captain's quarters, aka Geralt's room. And after an embarrassing amount of time spent looking, I finally found it. I definitely did not Google where it was, okay? In the primer, we learn about a bunch of new battle mechanics that I'll explain during the bandit battle later. For the other quests, I went to the library and snatched all the recipes. While here, I spoke to Ignatz, a golden deer student. I also found the game's world borders with this knight blocking the way. Then I saw some cats and tried to hit them with the primary lotus. After that, I met up with Dimitri and Claude who gave their thoughts on our mission. I also spoke with Dimitri's friend, Deju, who had some pretty interesting dialogue. It is better if you do not approach me. If you spend too much time around a man of Dusker, there will be rumors. Rumors? It is better if you do- if you spend- What does he mean by that? We then raced back to the dining hall, gave the lady the recipes, and received some rewards. After that, we got an entirely new option when it comes to the dining hall. Cooking. Not just cooking by yourself either, but with one of the students. So I called Mercedes, a Blue Lion student, and together, we cooked up a scrum diddly umptious meal. And before we wrapped up the day, we had a quick conversation with Petra about whether hot or cold weather is better. Uh, I said the cold is better. And just like that, the day was over. Day 19. Today is our first day actually teaching. I mean, prior to this, we've been exploring, doing quests or battling with the students but today we actually get to teach now the teaching system or actually the lectures here are incredibly detailed i think it's super super cool i'll go through it with you you as a teacher have a certain amount of energy you can spend teaching indicated by your activity points uh the students you choose to focus on will have the opportunity to have some of their stats boosted uh as you can see on screen now the important thing is to try and boost each student's strengths to maximize their efficiency as soldiers with the skills and goals section students are already have a decent idea of what they want to learn, and it's your responsibility to focus their energy into developing skills they want. Sometimes you get rewarded by focusing on their strengths with either an increase in XP or an increase in the student's motivation. Oh yeah, motivation is another factor I want to talk about. During the course of the week, by selecting the right teachers to teach lectures, you can boost certain students' motivation. You can also do this by sharing meals with the students, talking to the students, and cooking with the students. Not just that, but they also have this super cool system where a student can change their goals based based on what they think is the right path for them, allowing them to spec into less areas or more areas depending on what they want to do. Like, holy, this stuff is super cool, man. What the hell? So with Edelgard, I had her focus on her axe and authority skills. Next with Petra, I had her focus on her sword skills and had Hubert work on his reason and faith skills, skills that will help his magic get better. And just like that, I was out of energy for teaching. Now that the basic teaching was done, uh, it's time to set group goals for the week. The task for this week would be stable duty. Seeing as Ferdinand had an inclination for it, I had him and Bernadetta do it this week. After the basic teaching and group goals, there's even more. A live Q&A section where students can ask you questions, and depending on your answer, you have a chance to build rapport with them and potentially boost motivation. Uh, sadly for me this week, I did not answer Casper's question the way he wanted. My bad. Oh, so the week is going by. Oh. Already? Day 24. Today, Bernadetta and Ferdinand are tending to the horses, and although they seem like they'd have clashing personalities, they actually did an incredible job. Good stuff, guys. And at the end of the week, everyone grows, having gained some well-earned experience. Day 25. It's official. We are a quarter of the way done with our time. Now that the weekend is upon us, we finally get to do stuff ourselves again. This Sunday, I decided to do an optional battle. Working on students and stuff is kind of fun, but we can't be huddled up in the monastery all our lives. It's time to battle, people. Now that we're in battle, allow me to tell you about those mechanics from earlier. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I don't fully understand this one. This is called a battalion. They're an item that gives the student a fear radical army that boosts their damage. Uh, but yeah, I don't fully get it yet. The next mechanic is a gambit. What's a gambit? Let me tell you. Units with battalions can use gambits. These gambits shake up the enemy, leaving them in a rattled state where they can't move and have decreased stats. Sounds pretty good. 
but the actual accuracy of these gambits is pretty low. However, by being in close proximity with some of your units, you receive a gambit boost, increasing both the strength of the gambit and its accuracy. Day 26. As you can see, I chose to instruct automatically. Yeah, this was a mistake. Always teach your students. This auto instruction is beyond garbage. Day 31. Group activity with Bernadetta and Ferdinand, and yet again, they did a great job. And with that week over, we saw level ups from Edelgard, Hubert, Ferdinand, Linhart, Caspar, Bernadetta, Dorothea, and Patrick. This Sunday, instead of exploring or battling like normal, I had Mr. Hanneman do the weekend seminar with the students. With seminars, depending on the teacher chosen, the students with those certain skills will show up. Uh, let me give you an example. Such as with Hanneman's seminar, there was a focus on bows and magic. So students interested in those skills showed up for the seminar. The students that show up to these seminars also gain motivation, helping them learn even more during the school week. After the seminar, we had Bernadetta and Dorothea both level up developing new abilities. These are two students I need to work on because as you can remember in the practice battle, they were really not pulling their weight. Day 34. Today's Mercedes birthday. I bought her flowers. Day 37. The day before we set out to defeat those bandits. The class has a small discussion before the battle. Day 38. The battle with the bandits is upon us. But before we go, I have another cool mechanic I want to show you guys. Every five levels or so, you and your students have the option to undergo a certification exam for a higher Class. Seeing as Byleth had reached level 6, I had the option between him becoming a mermaid, mermaidon, what the hell is that, is that a mermaid? Whatever. That or a fighter. The first one seemed better stat wise, so I had him do the exam for that one. And, well, he passed. Anyway, battle time. So, we are taking children into battle, are we? I am not certain I will be able to sleep soundly after beholding something like that. We doing it though. So this is the Red Canyon, a ruin of sorts by the look of it. Let's end this quickly. The knights chased us all the way here? This guy still? This bot is still part of the story? All right. Professor, I hear there's a back road to the west. Why don't we split up and attack from both the west and the front? Hmm. Okay. Now, I wonder what she means by that. I'm taking a look at the map. This is left, then this is north. So I'm assuming come in from this side, and then we also come in from this side. But to get in at first, we all just need to charge through here first. Now we need you guys to move closer though. Oh, uh, Bile looks so ugly. Uh, let's just end the turn for now. I want these guys to aggress already. Oh god. Good job. Counter two. Oh, yo, he one shot him on a counter. What's going on? This level up was crazy. Okay. Nine damage. Okay. Nineteen on the cat. 38 damage! What's going on? Each Why are we doing so well? To grow. I guess I should just finish this guy up then. Now you know your limits. Regrettable, but there was no other way. Wait, do you not want to kill them? Okay, nice heal. Lin Hart, the goat. Oh. He moved kinda close. Level up for Hubert! Alright. Okay, so we want to split up into two teams now. I'm thinking we'll do Edelgard and Edelgard and Petra, and then we'll have Byleth, Linhart as a healer, as well as Bernadetta and Ferdinand. Okay, so we'll start we'll start splitting up now. Oh no, why are they jumping Casper again? Yo, they're seeing a, like a weak link in the armor. Like, what's going on, my guy? Yet again, only seven damage. Yo, this is kind of sad. I cannot lie. This has been tragic from both of us. Wait, can they not attack this turn then? Petra? Fuck this guy. Ooh. Oh my god, Petra's too good. Like, this is such a broken unit. What the hell? Student, sorry. So now we keep progressing. Damn, they're coming from the west too! Can't stand these brats. This guy's got a decent bit of XP. Let's see what Bile can do. You're it can't be the mercenary from before? It's the what now? Your pals with the knights? Uh, I'll kill you and your pesky brats. Took this fraud. Next up is Ferdinand. Can no one else attack? My goat can though. I don't know what that does. Sending these brats instead of the knights means they've underestimated me. Big mistake. Uh oh, what is he doing? Never mind, he just died. All right, cool. Uh, I should have never listened to that idiot. What a mistake. 
After the hard fought battle, Sothis talks to us again. She questions why we seem to recall this area. She can't seem to understand her familiarity with this place despite having no memory of being here. It seems like something incredibly plot relevant might have happened here, but we have no way of knowing right now. We head back to the monastery where Edelgard pulls us aside to ask about the history of the canyon. She tells us about certain architectural differences between the known world and the ruins she found in the canyon, as well as her theories for who or what could have been there. Following that, Rhea talks to us a bit more and yaps on about a plot with a goddess in that canyon or whatever. So this hears this and has an existential crisis. A goddess? I have no memory of her. But then, I have no memory at all. Of course, we also have the mystery of why I'm here with you. Is it somehow connected? Perhaps some past regret is stopping me from moving on. And now I'm forced to stay with you instead. No, that's not it. I can't believe in such a meaningless existence. Only to fall asleep right after. I... Uh... <sighs> th th that's what we're dealing with, okay. The next day we're called in by Rhea and Sedith again. Being honest, I'm tired of these bums pushing me around. But I guess uh, medieval bag is still back. It seems that one of the kingdom's nobles, Lord Lonato, has started rebelling against the church. Seeing as the church has way more power than Lonato, me and my students are sent on a mission to simply help with the aftermath of the battle, to, you know, build their experience and stuff. However, in the middle of our conversation, a lady by the name of Catherine joins the conversation. This is Catherine. She will be leading the knights whom you will be accompanying. Nice to meet you. We've heard a lot about you. If you need anything, just ask. This mission should prove useful in demonstrating to the students how foolish it would be to ever turn their blades on the church. Yeah, as if that's not ominous or suspicious at all. Listen, I'm on to you all right. Day 43. Beauty's passing. Hey, it's Sylvain's birthday. Here you go. Ah, uh, yes. All right, boys. Uh, we're back. Another day, another nickel. Been another week teaching at the school, and I started it off strong by doing some choir with Anna and Dorothea. After that, I headed over the battalion guildmaster to replenish some of the battalions, or soldiers rather, that I spent in the last battle. Next, I headed over to the training grounds and spoke with Edelgard a bit more. I've been hearing a lot about the place called Abyss lately. The name is unsettling, but I don't really know anything about it. If you have time, could you look into it for me? Investigate the stories about Abyss. Maybe the traveling merchants who come and go know something about the place. Merchants, eh? Anna, Anna has something to say about Abyss? it? You're interested in that place, are you? Ancient sprawling remains deep below Garrick Mach. That's Abyss. Some folks have made their home there. Obviously, they all have their reasons and tales to tell. But only the most enterprising merchant would venture near it. My advice, avoid going there yourself. Whew. That was a lot of work, if I'm being honest. But now, it's time for the most important quest in this game so far. Feeding animals. Yeah, that's all. And with that, I ended day 46's activities. Day 47. Now that we're halfway through the story, I'm gonna start blasting through some uneventful days, all right? Because quite frankly, I'm tired as hell scripting this right now. I taught Dorothea pushing her sword skills, Linhart strengthening his magic by increasing his reason stat, and helping Bernadetta with her bow skills as well. This was followed by a standard Q&A session, and more surprisingly, Petra, who now wants to focus on her sword and bow skills so she can spec into being a thief or an assassin. I can't lie, this is very cool. Day 51. The week goes by as we finally pass the halfway mark. Today's Lauren's birthday. Uh, don't really care. Flowers, here you go. Now shut up and leave me alone. Day 52. It's Byleth's, aka, it's my birthday. Wow, how incredible. Got a birthday gift from Edelgard? How nice. Black Eagle Pendant. Very cool. And this week's group activity is being done by Casper and Petra. We haven't really done this before, but it has to do with riding a Pegasus and a dragon. Which, I mean, come on, that is raw. At the end of the week, Linhart leveled up and learned fire magic. Nice. Casper also leveled up, getting a new axe ability. Day 53. This Sunday, I decided to take it easy and let Mr. Hanneman teach the class. Seeing as some of the students have been demotivated recently, Mr. Hanneman's lecture is a great way to boost their motivation. A lot of the students, plus Byleth, leveled up, increasing their abilities. The students also got a motivation of plus 50, which is great as well. Day 54. Oh wow, the start of a new week. Maybe I am going too fast. Bernadetta, Dorothea, Linhart. Same stuff as last time. Oh, um, but Linhart learned a new spell called Physic. That one is important, so uh, remember it. As for the Q&A session this week, Bernadetta made a huge and honestly really good decision. If I hit someone, I want to do it from so far away that there's no way I can get hit back. I think I want to master the bow, then everyone will know at me as Bernie the Sniper. Okay. Focus on lance and bow skills. Focus on the bow skills to excel as a sniper. Okay, you're niching down. You love to see it. 
Yes, I support this 100%. Day 55. Today, Violet chooses to check up on Bernadetta and her progress. You're curious to know how Bernadette is doing. Go for a visit? Yeah, sure. Oh. Thank you, Lady Bernadetta. I will take my leave. Oh, good. Uh, bye! Uh, goodbye! Finally. Oh, that was awful. Just terrifying. nothing big that lady just wanted me to show her around a bit but strangers are just so nerve-wracking oh yeah how about when i first met you and i wouldn't come out of the corner or even uncover my face actually now that you mention it it's funny once i started talking to you i stopped feeling scared i wonder why you know professor you might be the first person I've been able to speak to normally since I got here, and I have no idea why. I'm happy about it too. When we first started out here, we had to do drills. Outside. I skipped those every chance I got. It's a terrible idea going out in the forest with all these people you don't even know. Thanks to you though, I can actually make it through class now. I'm grateful for that. I don't know what I'd do if you weren't here. <sighs> Sorry. I'm okay. I am okay. I'm doing just fine. I feel safe here, thanks to you. Wow, isn't that heartwarming? Makes you want to be a teacher in real life, until you remember the pitiful pay and the true nature of children. Good stuff, Bernadetta. You're probably my favorite student so far. Day 59. Group goal is done again by Petra and Casper. Day 60. And Edelgard's birthday. Wow. Can you guess what I'm going to buy you? That's right. Flowers. <laughs> Fla All right, guys. New week, new me. Let's do some battling to switch things up with everyone having leveled up pretty significantly as well as having learned new abilities and techniques. I was pretty eager to get out there and start battling again. And after an exhausting day of battling, it was time to call an end to day 60. Day 61. I'm sure you guys are getting the gist of things now when it comes to teaching, and I mean, so was I. You know what? Let's try and uh, see what some automatic instructing does. Yeah, so Edelgard gained a brand new ability called Battalion Vantage. Not sure what it does yet, but I'm sure it's cool. As you can see, the students didn't gain much motivation from the auto instructing, to be honest. That sucks, but hey, at least Linhart is focusing entirely on faith instead of reason so he can be a better healer. Awesome. That same day, we went to check on Dorothea. Dorothea is an interesting student because at first, I completely neglected her when it came to training, and boy, was that a big mistake. Her thunder magic is so genuinely useful. I think she's enjoying herself, but I'm pretty interested to see her thoughts on her classes. Dorothea. Well, I had fun today. Of course. You want to see me again, yes? Uh, of course. I'd love to, Dorothea. <laughs> well, until we meet again. Oh, hello, Professor. Were you watching that? <laughs> All right, bye, <laughs> The attention to detail! Bro's been paying attention, okay. Yes. Is there a problem with that? Ooh, how are you gonna how are you gonna retaliate? Look, I know what I'm doing. My claim as a diva won't last forever after all. I must look to the future. As a man, you may not feel so rushed about these things, but I know my beauty will eventually fade. I very much want to find a good partner here at the Academy. Someone who will take care of me for the rest of my life. Hmm. I want to continue the conversation, but I don't want to hurt this this person's feelings. I want to ask, is that really what you want to a This is like an intrusive thought, but this is what I would actually say. But this is a video game, so I'm going to say my intrusive thought. Finding someone to take care of me? <laughs> of course it is. Who could ask for anything more? Anyway, I value your opinion, Professor, but I won't have you interfering with my life plans. Unless you'd like to take care of me into my old age. That'd be something, eh? How about it, Professor? It would be weird as hell if I said okay. But I'm gonna say I don't think so. I wasn't... <laughs> you aren't being serious, are you? I was just teasing. Yeah, I don't get what's going on. My fault. How did I answer three times wrong in a row? Did you really just consider spending your whole life with me? Yo. I thought this was gonna be Pokemon Click yesterday and it was the same answer. 
Why am I getting a bunch of actual real human dialogue? That was a positive interaction? The more you know, I guess. Day 67. We've come to the end of the week again. How splendid. With the mission with Lord Lenato coming up tomorrow, I took today as a day to relax and, you know, chill with the students. I met Casper in the hall and talked about how he loves eating so fast, so I agreed with him that he should do that. I met Linhart, who actually wasn't a fan of the way Casper was eating, so I agreed with him that he shouldn't do that. <laughs> Boys, listen, we're friendship maxing. The plan is simple. Linhart and I chefed it up and made some incredible blessed jelly. Who do I want to share a meal with? What do the up arrows mean? Where's Casper? I want to help that guy. Okay, let's do Edelgard and Dorothy. Oh, I love this meal. How did you know? I think I like this, but it's been a while, so I'm not sure. Oh, I wish I could have invited Casper. Whatever, it's fine. Professor, level up! Are you finally out of E-class? Please? Let's go! The supply of activity points for instructing and exploration have increased. Yes! More monthly funds for activities. Sick. What a great day. Nothing, and I mean nothing, could ruin this. Can I accept the quest? If you have a moment, I would like a word. It has been brought to my attention that certain individuals have been making advances toward flame. This second option is kind of crazy, <laughs> considering you barely know this person. All right, um, whatever. Let's go for it. My brother would not be pleased if he heard you saying such things. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? If you do see anyone getting too close with Flame, please inform me of it at once. Will do. Whew. I don't even mean to do it either. I'll just type in some dialogue. Day 68, the day of the battle with Lord Lanato. Before we headed out, just like Byleth, some of the students had surpassed level 5, and with that comes a new certification. First, I had Petra upgrade and become a fighter, giving her increased strength. Also had Edelgard upgrade into a mer- Oh my god, whatever. The same class as Byleth. And finally, I had Hubert upgrade into a monk, giving him stronger magic. Before we finally left for battle, I had Byleth change his lame battle outfit into his OG drip. Oh, and I gave him some glasses too. As for why, the wealth. Our job with this mission is simple, to deal with the aftermath of the battle between Lord Lenato and the Church's Knights. However, if things do turn left, spoiler alert, they do, we'll have to join the fight. With our class, we have Catherine, a Knight of Seros and wielder of a weapon called the Thunderbrand. Isn't that a cool name? The Thunderbrand being one of the hero's relics, a group of incredibly strong weapons that were given to the heroes by the goddess, with there being 10 in total. Huber wonders why Lenato would do such stupidity, considering that Lenato is aware of how strong the Church is. Roughly four years ago, the King of Fargus was murdered by the people of Dusker. I believe that about sums it up, correct? To put it simply, yes. But there's more to that story. They had accomplices within the kingdom as well. Lord Lenato's son, Kristoff, was one of them. And so he was handed over to the church for execution. Whatever the truth behind that incident may be, Lord Lenato has harbored resentment toward the church ever since. Well, to be more specific, his grudge isn't only against the church. It's also against the one who turned Kristoff over to them. All of a sudden, a knight rushes over to us. The enemy troops have somehow used the fog to slip past the church's knights. It seems like we'll have to battle as well. Unlike any other battles we've had so far, the fog mechanic in this one changes the dynamic of battle significantly. In previous battles, the enemy has always been visible. The chess aspect of the game, you know, moving your units across the board so they are within or slightly out of the enemy's range, isn't something we can do here. So I decided to keep it safe with Byleth, our highest level unit, taking the lead with the students following safely and close by. With Petra and Edelgard also being relatively strong units, I slowly moved them forward. This was almost an incredible blunder on my part as Petra got targeted by two enemies in a row. The AI in this game is no joke. It genuinely will target units, especially weaker ones or healers if it can. With Petra having taken significant damage, I had Linhart heal her up using his new magic physic. See? I told you it'd be useful. Awesome. Oh wait. I completely forgot. Petra's sword broke in our last fight. You see, when you use combat arts to buff your attacks, you also slightly reduce your durability. I had completely forgotten to replace your sword, and yeah, this was not a good situation to be in. Luckily, Byleth did have a spare iron sword on him, so for the first time, I used the trade mechanic that, well, that allows you to trade items between your units. We mowed down some of the units in cold blood. Well, 
Byleth did. Some of the students actually weren't fans of, you know, murdering civilians. This new enemy that looks like a plague doctor was also pretty strong, but even he wasn't a match for Hubert in monk mode. the goddess. Now you face the knight of Theros! The fog is cleared. There's nothing left to hide you or the filthy central church from the judgment of the goddess. We slowly advance forward as we're approached from both sides. This is really not good. As much as I've tried to fix it in recent times, the level difference between a lot of my units has led to a genuine imbalance in the team. We have to move as one or we are getting packed. After dealing with the threat around us, we slowly inch towards Lanado. I don't know what's wrong with Lanado's units, but oh my god, these guys will just not leave Petra alone. The following event is both comedic and traumatizing. All right, so get this. First, Petra gets hit with a gambit by the opposing team. Luckily, it didn't do that much damage, but it did leave us rattled. Guess what they hit with her again? Another gambit with a gambit boost. What? the hell, man? Petra literally almost dies here. What the actual hell? Not just that, but Petra's battalion leaves her as well. Oh my god, man. And then the third one uses another gambit with a gambit boost on Violet. I'm gonna... Oh my god. <sighs> okay, you know what? Silver lining. At least they didn't use the third gambit on Petra. I would have been finished. This last night was incredibly strong. Byleth wasn't doing much damage to him, and he was doing counterattacks that were equal in strength to our attacks. Luckily for us, we have a student with a perfect matchup for this guy. I had Dorothea use her Thunder Magic Thoron at a range. This range made it so that he couldn't counterattack. Not to mention, it did insane damage. I've said it once, and I'll say it again. Dorothea is one of our best students. I had Bernadetta finish him off and all that was left was Lord Lanado. You have been deceived by that witch. I will show you the truth. A damage. 13. Okay. Can Petra do any damage yet? She can. Okay. We can wrap this up, I think. She can. Okay. That defense is high. Whoa. Whoa. Do you have any more physic left? Thank God. Linhart, my goat. I thank you. Hope he doesn't kill any of these guys. Call me a heretic. Oh! No! Oh, thank God they missed because gambits are garbage in this game. Oh my God, thank you. We were literally about to get packed. All right, Violet. Took this bum. Good stuff. That vile woman. Christoph, forgive me. I never thought I'd see Lonato meet this fate. Well done, everyone. Let's gather our troops and go. With the battle being over, the students are saddened by the fact that Lanato's troops were civilians. After a short conversation with Edelgard, Catherine joins the conversation, showing us a scroll she found on Lanato's corpse, the scroll containing a plan to assassinate Lady Rhea. We rush back to the monastery and speak with Lady Rhea about the mission, and more importantly, the assassination plan. Lady Rhea commends us for our work, but I praise the students. They did the heavy carrying. However, she disagrees. She thinks that the students must learn to punish disbelievers even if they are civilians. That those civilians deserved to die. I'm telling you, something is off about this lady. Seth cuts in and tells us about the assassination plan. The note said that the assassination would take place on the day of a ritual, the rite of rebirth. Our next mission is to be security for the monastery on this day. Seth deliberates on how important this day is and hesitantly, I accept 
the mission. Day 73. An entire week has passed since our last battle, and today, I met up with the students to discuss our new mission. Edelgard establishes our mission is to set up defenses in the monastery. Hubert brings up his point yet again, and this time, honestly, I'm on his wavelength. It's a distraction. Edelgard agrees. They don't want to assassinate Rhea. They're here to steal something. Ferdinand chimes in, wondering if it's the valuable weapons in the monastery that they're after. Dorothea thinks it's the treasure vault, and Linhart suggests that it might be underground as well. There are many possibilities for where these guys could go, and quite frankly, I don't know where they'd go either. In the middle of our conversation, a woman by the name of Shamir walks in the room, together with a boy named Cyril. Shamir is a knight of Seros, and Cyril is her apprentice. Cyril also happens to work for Lady Rhea. They'll be helping with security on the day of the ritual as well. And with that, day 73 is over. Day 74. My first mission this Sunday was to meet up and speak with Edelgard. As I barged into the Black Eagles classroom, I had a short conversation with Dorothea concerning death and the value it has depending on who died. It's obvious she was affected by our last mission. Hello Edelgard. Our enemy's true target. What could it be? The monastery has been around for nearly a millennium. It's only logical that there are secrets here. We'd better investigate. Would you mind asking around and seeing what you can dig up? Once you've uncovered some leads, we'll regroup. I accept Edelgard's quest. I took my time going around the monastery and speaking to several of the knights, gaining more and more info. This knight doubted that anybody would rob the kitchen. This monk said that it was possible that they would rob the greenhouse. In the cathedral, I met Flane and this knight who gave me some very valuable information. On the day of the rite, the monastery will be open to the public, including the Holy Mausoleum. The Holy Mausoleum is where the tomb of the Divine Saros lies. There she slumbers, eternally. Mmm, maybe they want her body. That's pretty much all that's in there. Just an ancient coffin. It's sealed with a powerful magic to protect against would-be grave robbers. Interesting. After asking around, I talked to Casper at a new area called the Knights in Hall Stable. Hey, I got a favor to ask. You know about the fighting tournaments here at the monastery? I hear anyone can get involved. Oh, I know. You and I should sign up, Professor. Yeah, sure. To get more information, I head to the library and talk to another monk. He says that the books in the library are valuable, but he didn't see the value of someone stealing them. And finally, I speak to Henneman. He says that the objects in his personal study room are valuable, but useless to anyone other than him. Alright, we have all the clues. Let's uh, go back and report to Edelgard. I knew I could count on you. <sighs> There's a place that the church values above all others. Okay. On the day of the rite, it will be open to the public. That will make it much easier than usual to access. Precisely. We can't know for certain, but it's a distinct possibility that the Holy Mausoleum is our enemy's target. Huh, interesting. I feel like I'm saying huh interesting a lot, but... Yeah, I mean, it's just interesting. I don't know what to say. After the conversation with Edelgard, I head over to the training grounds to complete Casper's quest. Tournament organizer. Me and... Wait, where's Casper? Now what the hell, man? I wanted to do this with Casper. Where is he? No. Oh. Aww. Six or higher? Yeah, it'll guard him come. We blitz through these units in the fighting tournament. As a reward, we get a steel sword and 300 gold. Hungry to complete more quests, I met up with Manuela. I haven't actually interacted with Manuela that much, but for some reason, I could sense that there was something oddly familiar with her voice. Would you be so kind as to do me a favor? So I googled it and... I knew it! Oh my god, I knew it! Oh my god, I knew it! Oh my god, I knew it! Manuela is voiced by Ash. Oh my god, I heard it and I could tell. I accepted her quest for faculty training. She trains me up and... Wow, the quest is already over. And to wrap up the day, Bernadetta and I make some blessed jelly. Day 75, three quarters of the way in. This week, I decided to focus on some of the weaker students. In our last battle, there was a pretty big discrepancy in strength, so gotta focus on that. I taught Linhart first, as he had been a consistent target in previous battles. I accidentally taught him the wrong thing, but luckily, by consoling him, he regained his motivation, allowing me to focus on his faith stat. Following Linhart, I focused on Ferdinand, my by far most neglected student. Ferdinand has also been lacking a little bit. What does he want to work on? Lance and Axe. Let's get his Lance skills up. It's good. Is that all we can do with Finn? He doesn't have high enough motivation? No way. Aww. Well, who's the lowest out of these guys? Dorothy. Okay, we should, should teach her then. Sword and Reason. I think she's gonna end up going into just Reason, so let's focus on just her Reason skills. 
Everything went pretty well today. I appreciate your coaching, Professor. Now let's just keep putting into reason. Oh, I have one more activity point. Oh, we leveled up before. I forgot. Uh, Hubert or Petra? Well, let's get Petra's sword skills up. Thief with the heart of gold. Nice. Level up. Understanding. You do have understanding. Skill level up. C plus. Combat are bane of monsters. Petra has too many combat arts. She needs to donate some of them. Sword prowess level three. I'm closing in on expertise. True. Praise. More to motivation. Giving me praise? I will get more soon. <laughs> okay. Bow skills? We should give her a bow. I don't think she has one, does she? I have understanding. Skill level up D plus, okay. Uh and then I'll do this again. And that's gonna be it for today. Group tasks. Stable duty. Ferdinand didn't really do too much, so I want him to work on it. And then we didn't do anything with Edelgard, so she can do that as well. Begin lecture! I have a question for you, Professor. Ask away. When I take a lecture I'm not interested in, I get so sleepy. I just can't fight I just can't fight it. I should give up, don't you think? Close my eyes and enjoy a peaceful slumber. No need to fight it, you can't help it. Try getting plenty of sleep before the lecture. If you take an interest, you won't get sleepy. Okay, what would I say? I don't want him to just sleep during class, but like I think this is the answer he wants to hear. Because if we want to make everyone do the best they can, they should focus on stuff they're actually interested in. So I'd say there's no need to fight it. Yeah, go to sleep. I do believe you're right. You can go to bed. You're not learning anything. It's fine. Professor. I prefer to slay my enemies without having to lay a finger on them. With that kind of power, why would I bother with normal weapons? By focusing on reason, I can be a great magic user. Focusing just on reason. Yes, I support this. Alright, now the days are passing. Our professor is certainly adventurous, but I wonder what the point was of putting us on the same team. What? You think teaming up with me is a bad idea? Yes. Results or no results, this is far from a great idea. Do they not have good chemistry? Hmm. I was hoping we would do better. It's a decent result for two people who don't get along terribly well. Why are you guys ops? What the hell? Okay. Nice to see everyone's leveling up. This Sunday, I decided to take it easy. All those quests from last week kind of burned me out. I had one of the teachers do a seminar. Uh, we'll have... I want Dorothy to level up as well as Linhart. So I guess Manuela will be pretty alright. Let's have her do it. Nice. Well, that increases motivation. Oh, I should have done it with Ferdinand. Oh no. It struck manually. I really hope Ferdinand has motivation. No. I'm ruining this guy. No, how do I? Okay, I'll do that next week. I'll teach him next week. That way his motivation is higher. <sighs> okay. Day 82 is here and today was more of the same. Some more teaching for Linhard, Dorothea, Hubert, and Petra. And although Ferdinand seemed unmotivated and was falling behind, today he came up with a preposition, focusing on his lance and riding skills so he could become cavalry. You know, the horse riding guys. Following that, we decided to check in on Linhart and how he's doing. We talked to each other about his drowsiness, how he can help it, and some other stuff. Really enough, he wants to investigate our crest. This is kind of interesting because I never thought Linhart had motivation like that. Good to know, I guess. Yes. Day 87. Today was a Saturday, and with that, we had another group goal. I'm starting to notice that Bernadetta and Ferdinand are kind of an amazing combo. They got a perfect this time, which is awesome. Day 88. It's Sunday again, and with this weekend, I wanted to right my wrong. I decided to have a lecture that would actually motivate Ferdinand. Perfect. We'll have Shamir teach him and some of the other students. And with that, motivation boosted by 50. Day 93. Day 93 was Claude's birthday. Bought him some flowers and boom, day 95. Today is an important day. The day of the ritual of the rite of rebirth. Before we started the day, since Violet had hit level 10 already, I had him become an intermediate class, which is the next level. After deciding on Thief, I looked at Violet's outfit for this class. Am I a fan of it? Eh, not really, but like, <laughs> let's equip it anyway, you know, switch things up. I have a short talk with the class on the mission. I tell them that I'm not sure how things could go today, and yeah, Definitely not the best thing to tell your students. Sedeth shows up to reiterate the mission. While doing this, Flane spills the beans and tells us that Sedeth actually has a soft spot for us. Oh god! We head to the stairs of the Holy Mausoleum to guard it where the start of our battle begins. Is everyone good to go? Hi. Um, I'm so sorry. I didn't even notice at the time. But holy, I, I was going through the recording, right? Because I'm scripting this. This is genuinely tragic. I'm going to open up the recording for you guys. Oh my god. Yo, so you see this screen right now, right? How many students are there? 
including Byleth, there are eight fighters. We used to have nine. Can you tell who's missing? Casper. He's actually dead, and I didn't notice this entire time. Oh, thank God. Wait, Casper, no! No! No, surely you don't do three times. Okay, I was about to say. Woo! That was close. No! He still exists in the story, but I can't use him as a unit anymore. All those times where Petra nearly died, all my other side units literally nearly died. This is no joke. He's actually gone. My fault. I'm going to let you guys get back to the video, but oh my god. Turns past. We were right. Unwanted guests have come to visit. Okay. Oh, those central church dasters have spotted us. Buy me some time while I open the seal on the casket. So they did want the body. Our enemy appears to be after the tomb of St. Saros in the back. Are they attempting to steal her bones? It would be best to defeat them before they achieve their aim. Unlike other battles, we have more restrictions here. There are specific tiles on the floor that you do not want to step on. We'll have to move our units carefully to avoid stepping on them. First, I had Petra attack one of the enemies. Although she did good damage, the enemy did a lot back with the counter. Not good. I had Hubert follow her and finish off the enemy. Classic. Hubert Clutch. With many enemies on the map, I really had to make sure that we moved as one group. If I slip up and we become separated, I could be saying goodbye to half of class. Death Knight, prove your strength and scatter these fools. No way. I don't take commands or waste my time on weaklings. We mowed our way through the Western Church Knights with a few close calls. Thank you, Linhart. You are so goaded. The reinforcements haven't arrived. Hmm. If they approach from behind, we can attack them from both sides. Uh-oh. Oh no. My worst fears have been realized. Okay, this is weird, but this is both very scary and very entertaining. The enemy actually plans on flanking us from both sides. Taking advantage of my poor distribution of levels. What the hell game, I might be cooked. Whatever, we move. We move the team up with our heavy hitters, Byleth, Petra, and Dorothea leading the pack. And can I just say, Linhart has been super clutch. Without his heals, Petra would have died like three times over already, I swear. As I moved forward until my enemies were destroyed. I got a bit too eager and created a gap in my formation. The back of my team was especially weak and worst of all... Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no. Fernand, can you do anything to these guys? Your iron lance is broken. This is really bad. We might be cooked. Oh no. These guys are really strong. We are going to die. Okay. They came back around, which means that they're going to have to chase us. They can only move as many blocks as us. Blocks? Minecraft. Okay, my fault. Um, I don't like that Linhart's on his own. But it'll have to do. I don't know, man. How much are those guys going to do? Can they hit Linhart? Thank God they can't. Oh my God, I was going to be so angry. Thank God. Can buy the free shows, guys? Ah, uh, they're going to jump for it now. Can you do any damage? It's 8 damage. Why is he so resistant? Oh my god, Petra, can you help? Petra can't even help. Oh my god, we're cooked. Okay, let's see if we can just one-shot this guy. Maybe if we just kill this guy, everything will be fine. You're too late. The seal oh. will be broken any minute now. But if we kill him, things will be fine, no? But uh, no. such power dwells within. I mean, do we not win? It's no use. A seal is broken. You can't... Uh, a sword. What does that mean? After seeing a sword in the coffin, the enemy plans to use it against Byleth. However, we're able to snatch it away from him and use it ourselves. Ah! 
The Death Knight makes a comment on the sword, sounding interested before teleporting away. What is it with these people and their instant transmission? Bro, you are not Goku. Catherine enters the room with her knights and thank god this mission is over. And with no one dead either. Just like that, we're with Sedeth and Rhea as well as the remaining enemies that were captured after the battle. They say that they aren't working with the Western Church and that they were deceived. Sedeth and Rhea aren't having it though and plan to have them executed. One of the priests begs for his life and the other accuses Rhea of having killed their comrades, calling her a monster. They are silenced and sent off. We've learned that the Western Church was behind this attack and that the Church of Seiros as a whole isn't as united as we thought. Edelgard explains that the Church of Seiros has many different factions such as the Central and Western Church, the Central Main Church being led from Garig Mok Monastery. It seems the Knights have been tasked with subduing the leaders of the Western Church. We may be given the opportunity to help them with their mission. To think, our own professor was born in Fodlan and yet knew nothing of the church. It is bizarre. Who the hell is Byleth? Why does he know nothing? <laughs> I never imagined explaining something so basic to an instructor of mine. You're something of a special case, are you not? Professor, do you agree with the Archbishop's actions? I don't like her. There you are, Professor. It seems Lady Rhea would like a word with you. My bad, does she Come hear me? me? My fault, my fault. The Archbishop lives. Oh! I have news. Both good and bad. The remains of Saros were not in a tomb. However, something else was. The Sword of the Creator. Ah, the weapon wielded by that thief, the King of Liberation. Luffy? You're five? Kidding. Thief. One Piece fan brain rot, sorry. At any rate, it is now in the hands of the Academy's new professor. I doubt you will be surprised to hear that the crest stone had already been removed from the sword when it was found. It would be foolish to keep crest stones. in the same location. I wonder what those are. There's more. The professor was able to awaken the sword's true power. Even without the crest stone, the sword glowed red. The professor's crest is compatible. There is no mistaking it. Absurd. Using a relic without its crest stone should be impossible. The King of Liberation's bloodline should not even... Hmm. They must be allowed to keep it, for now. I do not have enough information about the Professor to act. As for your request, I assent. The Death Knight is at your command. Use him well. Hmm, so he's his boss, okay. Good. I believe I will enjoy this a great deal. We meet up with Rhea once again. She thanks us for our great work, but more importantly, she gives us full ownership of the sword of the creator. Sedef is thrown off by this decision. Surely it is not the sort of thing one hands over so readily, even to someone who has the ability to wield it. If someone like Nemesis were to appear again, all of Vodlin would be consumed by war. Nemesis, okay. So I'm assuming that was the original final boss we saw in the cutscene that fought the, the lady. Nemesis, oh, okay, we do get to learn about him, okay. Nemesis. The King of Liberation. Oh, so this is a bad guy. He is an oh. ancient king of mankind who was defeated by Seros over a thousand years ago. Gotcha. Okay, so it was that when guy. When Fodlan was attacked by wicked gods, it is said that the goddess gifted Nemesis with the sword of the creator. Nemesis used that sword to defeat the wicked gods, saving all of Fodlan. Henceforth, he was dubbed the King of Liberation. However... His power began to corrupt him until he himself turned to the darkness. Saint Seros was forced to destroy him. Lady Rhea, I beg you to reconsider. Given a little more time, we could more accurately assess this stranger's abilities. No. I have faith, Sedeth. Faith that our friend here will not be corrupted by wickedness. Since the death of Nemesis, None have been able to wield the Sword of the Creator. Now, after all those long years of being sealed away, it has returned and found a new master. I understand. As you wish, Lady Rhea. The Sword of the Creator? The King of Liberation? Each tale is more confusing than the last. Agreed. And I really can't read that Rhea at all. Oh, me neither. I don't know if she's a good or bad guy yet. That sword is clearly precious. So why is she so keen to gift the thing to you? The sword of the creator. 
It somehow feels distinct from other relics we have seen. I despise not knowing what is going on. It... it frightens me. And yet, I place my trust in you. I must, whatever comes to pass, please swear to cut a path that is your own. Whew. And with that, day 96. We're getting close now. Despite being fresh off of a tiring battle, Rhea gives us yet another mission. A mission to eliminate some thieves. Thieves that stole, get this, a hero's relic. Currently, many knights are working on suppressing the Western Church, so it's up to us to do it. Also, it turns out that the Sword of the Creator is one of, if not the strongest relic out there. Also, you should know that Professor Hanneman has been looking for you. That is all. Good of you to come, Professor. I've heard much about you lately. Thank you. Specifically, that you are able to awaken the Sword of the Creator's power. In other words, your crest is too significant to be detected when using normal instruments. After this discovery, I began researching crests that might fit that description. A crest thought to have disappeared from this world in the millennium since the fall of Nemesis, the King of Liberation. The Crest of Flames. That is what you possess. Your ability to wield the Sword of the Creator has unequivocally proven my hypothesis. A legendary power, dormant since time immemorial and now resurrected, there can be no doubt that this ancient power resides within you. Day 98. A few more days pass, making it day 98 and Manuela's birthday. Here are some flowers. On our last day, we are on our way to visit Edelgard when... Fall... Save... She's tweaking in her sleep. Someone help! No... Uh, huh? Who's there? Professor, what are you doing here? <laughs> no pajamas whatsoever? Just sleeping in the drip, alright. That's fair. Uh, so you heard me then. Yes, it was a nightmare. I've had them since I was a child. Just my childhood. A time before I had realized who I was destined to become. I had a feeling you'd say that. I suppose I could try. But only if you swear not to tell a soul. Of course. I appreciate it. I dream of my older brother, paralyzed, helpless. My older sister crying for help that never came. The youngest babbling words beyond meaning. I see my family dying slowly, waiting in the darkest depths for a glimmer of light. I once had ten siblings, eight older and two younger. Oh my gosh, she's just like me for real. What the hell, man? Such a large family, and yet I became the heir to the throne. Do you know why? Every last one of them was crippled by disease, or lost their mind, or died. I was the only one left who could inherit the throne. Things kept getting worse. The darkness kept getting darker. In the end, I was the only one who survived. The nightmares are a reminder to never forget, to never allow such terrible things to happen again. Even now, I'm the only one who can carry the weight of the Adrestian Empire. The future of the Empire, of everything, depends on me. Hmm. This is a tough backstory. I, to. I suppose there's something in the air tonight. I've never told anyone about my past before. Please, forget I said anything. Sleep well, my teacher. And with that, ladies and fellows, men, we've come to the end of our 100 Days in Fire Emblem Three Houses. This video was super fun to make, so if you'd like to see more of this game, subscribing would be very much appreciated. Like, genuinely, just clicking that button is enough to make these videos worthwhile. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.